Hey, everyone, and welcome to another Gadget Talk. Chad and I were just talking briefly just right after this. This is going to be the one political thing I'm actually going to say for this entire thing. But the Senate actually agreed and voted unanimously to get rid of daylight savings time. I think that's the first time they've ever agreed on anything. All of them together, which is amazing. But, yes, that's something they need to get rid of. Arizona has it right. They've gotten rid of it a long time ago, and now it's yeah. time for the rest of the U.S. to catch up with it. So I just I'm so happy. <laughs> I, so do we get to be permanently on lost time or save time? I I don't care. I don't <laughs> want to change my clock. Once I get set to it, I yeah. don't – that this has been the hardest week with this time change for me. <laughs> you tired of changing your VC, figuring out how to change your VCR timer? No, most of my clocks change on their own, except for my coffee pot, but in my microwave. But still, I'm I'm done with it. I hate this time change. So my coffee pot but, always changes on their own, but I don't think Starbucks really matters. No, no, that doesn't change. No. <laughs> but so just all that. But um, before we get too much further, let's go ahead and take care of our sponsors. And then I have a f- announcement that I forgot to make last week. But I think it's really cool. A lot of y'all might have already seen it, but we'll catch up with that here right after these, uh, right after our sponsors. Maybe. Maybe. If you have not become a patron of the Geocache Talk Network, what are you waiting for? Patron levels start as low as a bison tube level at $3 a month. To sign up is easy. Simply go to the Geocache Talk website and click on the Become a Patron button or go to patreon.com forward slash geocache talk. Patrons now get the famous blackout coin, invites to special events, and other really great items throughout the year. Become a patron today. Logwork, the creators of the fantastic logbook made with genuine right-in-the-rain paper, the logbook's designed for the micro-containers of the present and future, geared towards the hider who'd rather go caching than doing cache maintenance. Find them at logwork.com, that's L-O-G-W-E-R-K.com. Have you subscribed to FTF Magazine yet? FTF Magazine is the number one geocaching magazine available. It is a quarterly magazine that you can be part of. Submit your geocaching milestones and adventures to be published. FTF Magazine is also interactive with puzzles to solve and the hunt to find Spartacus. If you can solve the puzzle or find Spartacus, then you will be entered in to win a special path tag. Every new subscription, you will receive a special swag pack. Subscribing is easy. Just visit FTF's website, ftfgeo.com. Don't miss out and subscribe today. All right. So I just want to welcome everybody. We got just finding our way here. Um, it was early. So is Dave, Dave Wagner. Um, and then we also have uh, Ryan Simmels on here. Uh, Darren um, from Australia. Let's see here. GC uh, DSK 11. And I guess this is that Canada doesn't do daylight savings time either. So, I mean, the rest of the world, I don't think, does it. So that's just really great. And then Adi on here says, I'm absolutely pathetic the first <laughs> week after the time change. Yeah, me too. Anyway, all right. So let's see here. Oh, we got another one from Australia here. Uh, Joe. Uh, and Brian then boys. Hugh, Yep. And then Huey. Hugh from is on Canada. here as well from Canada. The Pizza Ninja's on. Scooby loves poo from East Texas. All right. Love having everybody on tonight. Just thank you for joining us. Um, The announcement that I forgot to mention last week. um, Those of you know that there is an actual geocaching video game called TFTC, Tales from the Cache. Not thanks for the cache, but Tales from the Cache. It is a really great 3D immersive um, video game, real world, where you're running around finding caches. Um, I actually have some caches that are based off of mine that are in the video game. And geocache talk and the behind the cache logos are also um in there so they're all like on the backpacks and a lot of those on the network if you look at the logbook are there's our signatures inside the logbook so that's really cool i um, really big supporter it just went live it went live last week so you can go to stream or sorry not stream steam and um, you can go and get into it so you look for tftc uh, Tales from the Cache, and you can actually play it. It's, re- it's a lot of fun. There's still little bugs in there, but he's working those out, but he wanted to go ahead and get it out there. I think it's like 8 bucks US, so it's not expensive to get the game and start playing, but it's a lot of fun. Um, so check it out, and uh, you can go to TFTC um, on Facebook as well. You can There should be a link there, but it's on Steam, and it's just a lot of fun. So I forgot to make mention of that last week, um, 
been kind of playing with it since uh, in beta versions of it, been testing some stuff out and it's been, I've had it, I've really enjoyed it. Um, a lot of fun. It's, it has weather, it rains, it does a whole bunch of different stuff. Um, <laughs> Tales from the Crypt. No, this one is Tales from the Cash. Um, <laughs> however, there is a crypt that he's been working on that you can go find with cash in there. So that's, that's something that's really cool. Um, but it's just a lot of fun. I don't know if we have a link to put in the chat. I look, uh, I'll, I'll look for it. Well, I'll look for it while you're doing stuff here, Chad. Okay. Um, but in fact, in fact, don't, before we get much further, don't forget the challenge is to do a sci-fi inspired cash um, that we will be um, we build it. And then you can be on the show if you want and tell us about it, how, what the aspect of it, but sci-fi inspired cash for, and we'll be doing that the first week of April, um, that, that show that for that Tuesday night. So send us a link. Um, of course you can always send us a link, um, through, um, at, yeah, send it to us at an email at gadget talk podcast at gmail.com or tag us on Instagram at gadget talk podcast, Twitter, whatever. Uh, do we have a Twitter page on gadget talk? I think we have a geocache talk one, but I don't think we have a gadget talk. I don't think we have a gadget talk one. I've never done any. I don't tweet. So yeah. Yeah. I do here and there, but, uh, but definitely send it to us through Instagram. Um, and you can also tag me in as well behind the cache and even bounce bounce eight. Uh, so we'll get it one way or the other. So, but yeah, we'd love to have you on, but send us an email. Once again, that's at gadget talk podcast at gmail.com. You can send it to us. And uh, that way we can get you on the, on the, on the lineup to be on the show in the first week of April, and that is the sci-fi inspired creative or gadget cash. So that is our challenge for this month. Okay. Nice. Yeah, I'm looking go forward look to that, that one actually. I'll, all right. So I'm gonna I'll I'm gonna make you solo out here, Chad, and I'm okay. gonna go try and find the link for TFTC. So sounds good. All right. Okay, great. Well, um, so tonight, like we talked about, we're going to build the um well. We're going to turn the 3D printed uh, block, uh, sorry, uh, into, well, kind of try and make it look like like uh, like rock. So the element stones here from Fifth Element. Um, and so tonight what we're going to work on is we're going to work on actually doing the finishing of these. And then next week we will do the puzzle part of it. So... Just to jump right in and um, on this uh, is after you print it, first thing I do when I'm done printing it is fill it with the filler that we show on lots of the episodes. Uh, mine is I use the acrylic 3M filler in there and we have them in, in lots of the, the shows, the last yeah. few shows. I know we mentioned it, so we should have a link on there for that. So fill it up, sand it. I sand the whole thing. Although on this, you don't really need to have it smooth because I actually think that these lines, the texture actually adds to the stone. It, it does. It look, does. and that was something Derek was telling me. He's like, I don't think I'm going to sand it because the texture looks good. And I'm like, yeah, actually, you're right. It does look good. So, um, but, you know, when we do the finishing on it, it's the texture is actually going to go away. In fact, on one of them, I didn't do that great of a, a fill job on the joint and it went away. The joint did. So... Uh, okay. you'll see but it, it all depends on how thick you do your paint how many coats you do uh you know it's completely up to you this is this is just kind of the way i thought about doing um this and then you can change it up do it any way you want you can do any color you want to in fact all this stone stuff comes in multiple colors right um, no, it's nothing i invented it's all store-bought so you can do it yourself out there so first thing all i right. do is fill it sand it and now what we need to do is we need to distress it so right now we have very clean edges on here, and I don't like that, right? If it's stone, it's been dropped, you should have some kind of dents in it, um, some kind of marks. So what I use to, uh, to distress it is I use a Dremel tool. And with the Dremel tool, I have multiple tips to use in here. If we go to the build cam. Okay. Here. And then I also, here in a little bit, we'll go, I have the steam page pulled up and i just dropped the link in there for the tftc on there so we can go after we'll come oh, back yeah. to that later but let's we'll take care of this um because it's kind of fun i have the preview in here so we can probably see the preview of it too as well so but this it's really cool 
All right, there we yeah. go. Build cam. And Texas Challenge is this weekend, right? Or this week? Yes, yes, it so is. So Tom week. won't be on, which is odd. He always joins us, which is nice. Our our uh, puzzle guy, one of our puzzle guys. Okay, um, so the different tips I use, and I'll be starting out um, today with this tip here. Um, and so this here uh, tip is an engraving tip um, that I'm going to be using um, to start this out. And uh, so it's a tungsten carbide cutter tip uh, or a high-speed cutter is if you're looking for one. Uh, I know Derek beforehand was trying to find a link for multiple tips. So Right, um, and I'm it's dropping in right now. I, there's a kit. Uh, for a bunch of different Dremel kit oh, yeah. tips. Look at that. You're on it's top dropping of it. in, should be dropping in right now into the chat. So be looking for that. Um, so this is what I'm going to start out with. Um, and then um, I have multiple tips. So up here at the top of my little station here, I have different tips I use. Um, so um, I'll use engraving cutters. I'll use a stone cutter. And then I'll use a, uh, a, uh, a wheel, a buffing wheel. Uh, on it so but um, but, but you're only cutting plastic so why do you need the stone cutter yeah <laughs> it's not really stone wait i'm thrown <laughs> off here it look like stone <laughs> <laughs> i'm just trying to find something that yeah will distress it now one thing i learned uh, on doing this is i probably should have made my outside uh thickness of the shell a little bit thicker than what i did so if, if you're making yours or you're printing yours you may want to go ahead and make the outside wall thickness thicker um, because at some point I did go through a few areas and then I just ended up putting a little bit of putty on it and a quick sand and it looks great, but okay. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so what I'm going to start doing is just distressing the edges of this. Now there's no certain way to me to do it. I just hit it in certain areas until I like it and, and go from there. Kind of like so, when we did the, 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 um, the distressing of like the the screen canister and that aspect of yeah. it. Yeah, there's no there's no way. It, it, you're trying to the right or wrong way to, to do it. Up. Yeah, yeah, it's easy. To, if you're trying to screw it up, make it look like it's been dropped. Kind of doing that aspect of it, and adds that more of that realism to it. Yeah. Yep. So I'm just using um, my Dremel here, uh, and I'm just going to go ahead and distress it here. I'm just going to make some marks on here. So. Um, there's some like chips in it in different areas. You can make them different sizes, different lengths, different depths with it. Uh, if you want, um, that's completely up to you. Um, so, yeah, I know kind of when I printed mine, you can just keep going. I'll, I'll turn you down just a little bit. But when okay. I printed mine as well, those sharp edges just drive me insane. It just doesn't look right. Um, for it, if you look at the movie and if you watch the movie with the fifth element, you see that it's, they're not that perfect. And it's, it, it just adds, it's going to add some more to the realism and to the look to everything. Uh, even, the, even the cracks that are already in there, they need to be almost roughened up a little bit too. So, um, and it, this is just going to make it look so much better when you do this kind of distressing it this way. And like I said, it goes back to the, the finishing and the distressing, kind of like what we did with the screen canister with the paint aspect of it. But this time, we're physically putting the stars into the the product itself or into the cast itself. So this is just this is and this is just one step of this. Um, we haven't even gotten to the painting part of it. We're just distressing it. So, yeah. So I'm gonna just show. Actually, what I'll do is just show one edge so we don't spend all day working on one. Um, uh, but uh, anyways, I just kind of go through, and then if you want something in the middle here a little bit, you can do something in here. I feel like I'm at the dentist. But uh, so you can distress it however you want to. Uh, let me change the bit here real quick. Now, I know they're going to be asking, what brand of Dremel tool do you have right there? Uh, Dremel. It is a Dremel? <laughs> it's a, it's a, right there. Uh, oh, okay. It is. Uh, it is. Um, so I have a foot control uh, pedal on it, so I don't have to, I have my hands free. Um, so uh, I could probably pick it up here. 
so here's the foot control. So if you step on it, right, depending on how much pressure you put on it, it uh, spins. So it's nice. It keeps your hands free so you can hang on to whatever you're using. Uh, and then it goes up. You have a you have the leash on it here, the lead, and it right. hangs up here above the workstation. And so the motor is here. Okay. So. Yeah. See, mine is all in one piece. It's one of the just a smaller one. So well, it's that's why. Great. The only thing I don't have that I wanted to get, I've wanted to get for years now, is the quick. Uh, they have the quick release or the quick connect here, uh, rather than using the chuck. Uh, a drill bit chuck, yeah. So, but you know, can't have everything, or you can maybe I don't know. So, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and change this out here. And so, what I put on here is the engraving bit, and so this is just tiny. And this is what I'm going to clean up and work on these little imperfections and then these cracks here as well. With. Right, because those cracks are just too perfect. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's just geocache. It doesn't have to look great. I mean, I mean, it looks great as it is. If I found a geocache where you could do any of this, I'd, I think it would be awesome. I'd love to find one like it. But I just like to give it that little bit of extra. Plus, I like creating stuff. So Yeah. So uh, GCSK11 says uh, you should buy that quick chuck, um, quick change. It's so much easier and, to use and quick. So yeah, That's the it'll probably be ordered tonight. Let me see if I can go find. I'll find the link for it for you. Okay. I don't. I think they're like twenty dollars or something. So, anyways, I just go in here, clean it up. I can add some extra marks to it uh, if I want. The one thing I didn't bring up here. Um, and so I take time. It, it probably takes me close to an hour per container when I'm doing this or per, per block um, when, I'm, when I'm working on it. So, um, But I'm just going to do a few little things, show you what I'll do, and uh, you can change it up to whatever you want. Okay. All right. So, so I actually forgot one of the tips here I use. Okay. So I have to grab it. So, all right. So... Like I said, you, he's got Chad's got that that one, and I've just found the the quick change chuck, so I'm gonna send, put that also into the link itself um, down here as well, uh, because yeah, if you're changing out those bits, it it does get kind of. I think mine has that actually, so mine actually came with this link, or not link, but came with the quick change. So, but I don't have the foot pedal; it's just a hand switch, and it's not variable like what yours is. I like the variableness because sometimes. It's either too fast or not fast enough, and at least so that's re that's really great. I love that variable on that. Um, I think it's a Dremel forty flux, a Forta flux, F R T I. Okay. Or, yeah, well, F R T I. Like yeah. I think mine is one of the. Um, I'm trying to look at. Mine's just one of the lighter ones. I got mine at Lowe's. I know I can tell you exactly where I got it. They got it there, so they didn't have that one. Um, I think I only paid like maybe forty dollars for it, so it wasn't. It's not like the highest end one on on the market, but it's still. Um, Look, I used a, a, really, a Harbor really Freight really one for years that was like ten or twelve dollars, and there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah, they work fine. Yeah, and it's yeah. That's just those are always. It's always the tool that you use and how you use it. I mean, look at um, – I just drew a blank on his name. Um, Adam? Use this. Sure. Uh, GCD uh, SK11 says you need a variable. I love it. Trust me, my list of tools is growing every show. Um, in fact, I was sending links to my wife today for, for my birthday next month. Um because I have also have a shirt that says no, not I haven't. Well, how does it say? It? I have enough tools. Said no work woodworker ever. I have a shirt that <laughs> says that. So, um, said no man ever. Well, I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> said no woodworker. So. Um, so anyway, the other the other tip is, uh, it's stuck on another. I have a, that cheap one that I got at Harbor Freight years ago. Um, I used it on that one there a while ago, and the chuck is broken. It's one of those you hold the thumb thing in, and that broke. So, anyways, I ah. can't get it out. So we won't we won't uh, use that. We'll just use what we have here. It worked just fine. 
So I use this here to get in the fine stuff. You can make smaller marks, clean up some of these marks. Um, you know, it, it takes time to do it. Uh, and then you have to clean out these holes. Now, what I found to clean the holes out with um, easiest for me is to use a nylon uh, rotary brush or nylon brush piece on this. Um, and it actually, you can actually make some pretty cool looking effects with it. Oh, cool. So, um, so this will actually clean up some of the stuff. I and mean, if you go really fast with it, it actually will melt it, the plastic. Right. So it actually smooths it out a little bit, but it will take all the stuff off of here. Um, it cleans up really nice. Uh, and then if you want to make, smooth it out some of your edges. I mean, you could actually use this. And that makes them not so sharp. All well. right. So as Tess talking, the drum was kind of drowning him out a little bit. Sorry about that. Already bringing it down, which is fine. So it's just kind of using that brush there, kind of smooths it out, or now still kind of cuts it, and it actually kind of melts it, so it actually roughens it up a little bit. So it just it kind of smoothens it out. But you can see right there, I went a little too far in smoothing it out. Right. Um, but I could fill that in. But you could do, if you wanted like a crazy looking line here, you could use your Dremel tool and that makes that, it's indented a little bit there uh, on that there. And that's just using um, this nylon brush piece. So I go through and I just use it to, not on such a high speed, get the stuff out of these that I, I put in there, you know, when I was cleaning out the, the inside of them. And I, and I think it gives it that more unnatural, uneven edge look. Um, you can even use it to to adjust some of your edges here too to make a... Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize that's out of the picture. You can oh, use it on okay. your edges here to kind of give it also that, that look. If you look on here, I'll just do one here real quick. Um, so, and it comes out smooth. So, this is one of... This is kind of what I use for my cleaning up brush. Um, if you have uh, filament where you uh, had uh, supports, I can help clean up supports as well. So I go through with this tool and I just weather it, um, stress it out, whatever you want to call it. Um, so it looks more like stone to me. Right. Because I know when I printed mine, I'm looking at it and some of my filament, the way it printed, because the overhang right there, it kind of dripped down and that would just clean that up so much better. It, it, it does a really good job. I mean, th that, and that's the nice thing about the variable speed. If you don't go very fast, it just really cleans the edges up. If you want to actually make a mark or melt it a little bit, you just go a lot faster. So, anyhow, that's pretty much how I distress or age age the the uh, stone. Um, now I've, I've spent a lot of time, like I said, I spend about an hour per, uh, and I just go through it um, and 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 distress it, age it. So, right. Um, but you do however you want. And I'm putting a link in for the Dremel tool that you have. It's actually the 9100. That's what it looks like. Um, I think you might have said that. Um, so that's that's what's going in. Is I just dropped that in there now. So, say it again. What did what did you just say? The your uh, Dremel. It's the ninety one hundred. Oh, that is what that what it is? Yeah. Okay. The Ford Effects two point five amp flex shaft powerful rotary toolkit. Uh, hands free right. speed know. control for precision crafts and projects. Detail sanding, polishing, <laughs> engraving, and etcher. Etcher. So, so that link that link is also in there, and all these links will also be in the description um, after the show. Um, so be able to check that out for those that are um, watching at a later date. Um, those links will be in the description down below. So Yeah, and you can use little drill bits with these too. It's kind of cool. It comes with the little drill bits and everything. So even if you're just a hobbyist and you're looking at a multi-tool to use at your desk, that, that's actually a pretty fun tool, pretty nice little tool to use. Um, I right. find I use it a lot more for my 3D printing projects than anything else. I like to use it to clean stuff up. And I need to use mine more. I just, when I, yeah. So Okay, perfect. Well, so once we get that far and we have the stone done to how we want it to look for the print, um, we move on to painting. So okay. um, I have a video to kind of talk about it. Now, 
I did, I do typically, and I didn't do it in the video um, because my damn paint was all messed up. It actually was, was bad. But I sprayed the whole thing with a tan uh, paint. Okay. You could do a brown, you could do whatever you want. Um, Sounds like in a base color? Just a base color to kind of set a, the color I want. Yeah, exactly. Uh, once I spray it, then I go back through with a texture. Now I'm using two different types of texture. Um, the first texture, and it comes out very watery, um, is this uh, the multicolored texture here. And these are all by Rust Oleum. Home Depot carries these. Um, okay. It actually has a texture to it, and it is a multicolored, so it actually is like a sand. Okay. So I'll go through and I'll paint this, and how much you want to paint it is up to you. Um, it's pretty powerful. I actually have to hold it about 16 inches away from the, the print when I spray it. Um, and it comes out really runny, really watery. So I end up doing three or four coats on it. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and start with this, and then we'll move on to the other texture there. So let's start the video, and we can talk during the video. All right. Yeah. Okay, there it is. Oh. So this is the one that I tested on. So that's the multicolored texture um, there. Now this is in my spray booth. Always wear a mask. Um, I have a fan here that sucks it back through that filter. Um, and so I always test my piece. So this is the, the sanded texture here. Okay. It's not very runny at first. Um, so I do light coats on it. So um, I'll go through, hit it all, hit the top. You'll see having the turntable. You know, that's that a, really what, a cake yeah, decorating table um, helps out so much. Um, so I'll just go through here and hit this. And if you have an idea of a, a different way you would like to or you would make yours, I mean, mention it in the chat, too, because yeah, there's, there's I would always love to a lot of different you would make it. Yeah, there's always different techniques. And this is just this is just one technique. So, I mean, it, there's there's others. Yeah. So you can see actually on one of the sides there. Uh, when I spin it, and I'll put another coat on here. So I did this video, so it let it dry, went back. You can see the seam there, right, from where my... Right, I see, yeah, right there in the middle, right. Yeah, exactly. And it's actually going to disappear on this print. I'll show the print here. So this is, again, that same texture that I showed. And like I said, I do multiple colors and multiple coats. And it actually does a pretty good job at, at covering the whole thing for a base. Sorry, I'm listening, reading the chat. Yeah, here. I'm, I'm looking, I'm reading the chat too at the same time and watching. Uh, so, Rumba Cat says, very nice paint booth. Um, looks like you have a side vent. Yeah, so I have a vent in the back that runs uh, 600 CFM. Um, and uh, it's actually, was it, this is the temporary booth I made because uh, I tore my original one away or down when I moved my CNC. Right. And so I have every intention of build a new one, but this temporary one works great. So yes, but it's a, a 600 CFM fan in the back um, that filters, it runs it through the filter system. So um, I need a bigger filter system because it clogs up pretty quick or it can, but you can see yeah, it I, sucking I just in. Go outside. <laughs> yeah, that works too. Um, and then on the side, I use uh slat wood where I put in hangers and I can actually hang stuff or I can, if I was done with this one, I want to paint a different one. I can actually move that. It turns into a shelf. And so you could actually move your project over and paint the next one. So okay. um, last coat of this here. So you can kind of see how it's kind of really watery. And it looks like it's going on thick. But it dries as a sand. sand right. Edge. I'm going to go full screen just to help us out a little bit. As okay. it's looking at it. But yeah, that, I mean, I mean that just looks that really. In the middle. No, I don't. It, it, and even if I did, it would. It may add a little bit to it as well. Gary's asked me if I vent my Glowforge. I do. Glowforge has a fan that vents, and then I have an additional fan that is hooked to it that turns on by itself. Oh, what happened there? Hey, you guys want to I see the back of my room? <laughs> <laughs> That's your resin printers. You just wanted to show those. You just yeah. want to show those just for a second. In the messy part of my room. <laughs> and then this okay. here. Let's pause that, Derek. Uh there we go. So this is the last texture I put on. Now, I put it on really thick on this one. Um, if we go back here uh, to the screen here with me. Okay. Um, uh, there it is. Um, so this is a stone texture um, that I use. Again, Home Depot, you can get them in tan. You can get them in gray. Lots of different colors. Um, 
but this puts out a really this is textured it puts out the multicolor texture on it um, right but uh again i did this uh and you can put on as much as you want um you know when you're spraying it oh i think we both clicked on Sorry, it at the same I did time. That. i'll let you do it i'll let you drive <laughs> so yeah so there's there's that going on and that just that just Let's give it that really, more of a really stone good. texture, yeah. And here, I actually think I might have went a little too much. I might have, I might have got a little spray happy here, but uh, and I'll show you the difference on it. But I could always redo it or scrape it off or sand that top texture off. But you can see that that seam has pretty much disappeared on there. So that, that's pretty it, much it. Yeah, and that just looks really, really good. I mean, it's, just even like that. And I know you're even going to do some even more stuff to it tonight. But that just looks really cool yeah so, and there's there's like another shot of the that the zone. so perfect that the last so, it? that's it that's it on there all right so that like i said that just looks really good already there uh, not in paid endorsement rustoleum no it's not <laughs> i wish we, would. we need to work better on that <laughs> if they would like to sponsor gadget talk we would be <laughs> welcome and happy to talk to them absolutely um, i go through a lot of paint yeah i'm yeah any tools anybody that if you know a company that wants to sponsor gadget talk send them our right way um so yeah roma cats is saying beautiful very very realistic so yeah basically and like i'm gonna show you mine this is let me go i was gonna click my so this is like so here's mine and as you can see i haven't gone through and cleaned it up and this is a smaller version here but this is there's where the filament kind of came down um as so was, it looks like you didn't yeah. use supports. I didn't do supports at all. No. So if you I should have probably, I should have probably used supports. Little ones in there. I just didn't want to clean them. Sometimes that's it kind of can be a pain to, to clean out, but I should have done supports in that. Um, but that's just, I knew if I was going to go back and actually clean it up, I was just going to run a drum through it anyways. So it wasn't that big of a deal. Um, yeah, you're probably never going to know the difference, and it is a pain. It probably takes about an hour per block to pull the supports out of all those little holes. So, um, yeah, good point. Right. So, uh, Qu Quincy Cupid says you you have to put a sealer on it if you want to put it outside. We're not done with it yet. That's that's yeah. just that stage there. So, yeah, but yes. we, you're right. You do. You have to put a yeah. sealer on it. Yes, you do. And my and this one here that I'm making is not going to be. It's going to be in a big weatherproof box. So I'm right. not extremely worried about it. But yeah, you you do need to. But most things you do, you should put some kind of a clear sealer on it. Right. So, and Hugh's asking, is there an outdoor stone paint? Not that I found, um, but I'm sure there is. Um, right. So I'm trying to learn to not go to all this fancy stuff and get stuff where everybody else can get it. Um. And but then, uh, maybe, and then, I don't know. We can look it up here in a bit and see. So Dave's asking, does the paint, the, I think he's talking about the textured paint. Um, How does it do on the clogging after it sets a bit? Does it is, does the tip clog up or do you just basically use one can per use? No, it doesn't clog up, but I always wipe my tips when I'm done spraying them anyways with a paper towel. Okay. Um, but I, no, it hasn't plugged up for me. So I did these weeks uh, between. So this is right after I sprayed it and the tip is fine so yeah let me um, go. i have no problem with it okay i mean great questions that's, oh, that's a mean, good question actually that is I a didn't really work. great question because a lot of the a lot of these things because i know a lot of times if you don't wipe it down your paint's going to get clogged and you take a needle put it in there and a lot of times that it helps it sometimes it doesn't i don't mm -hmm. know so but definitely with like the sand and the texture on that that is a great question wondering how it does on the on there because those of us that print does a 3d printing if that tip gets clogged your print's gonna suck <laughs> it's, it's not gonna be fun for you that's for sure no no so all right so, so here i'll show the two different ones i have here and the difference so this is my original one i made uh weeks ago and this is what i did so you can see the difference in the amount of texture i actually think i put too much stone texture on it but that's my opinion um you know, it, it's completely up to you. And then there's no reason why you can't go over it. You could probably do that sand color over it again. Right. To actually kind of settle down that that color. Uh, which is a good idea. Maybe I'll have to try that. Um, 
But uh, anyway, so this is where we're at here on this point of it. And you can see in the middle here, you don't see that seam, which no, I was amazed. I thought solid. for sure that I was going to really see good. It. Yeah, I thought for sure I'd see it. But uh, anyway, um, so now what I'm going to do is go through and I'm going to give it that little bit more of an effect <laughs> look. Um, what? So, and so, no, just this Rumacast goes, I'm a silly goose. Put a pen in the nozzle? I didn't think of that. <laughs> uh, then Gary um, says, uh, what did you do on the ends? So like the the top and the bottom on your on on there. Okay. So the top and the top looks the same, right? Um, the bottom is empty, so you can do your puzzle, and then there's gonna be a cap that goes on it. So right. um that's pretty much how that is. But the tops are the same um as the sides and bottoms, so um, I actually didn't do much with this one here. I noticed that you can see the the uh, layer, the lion layer lines. And so I actually need to go back and change that. I was thinking about it, but I was thinking, ah, oh, it's a geocache. I don't know if anybody's going to care. I don't know. Well, and, but, if, and you may not see it as much when you do the next step that we're going to be doing tonight. Yeah, that's true. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go back and we're going to add a little bit of tinting, a little bit of fading to it or shading, just to kind of give it that more that depth look to this here and so what i'm going to do is go back to the old faithful airbrush on here and um we're going to go ahead and just airbrush in these in all the different little seams um oops that's not my dremel uh so let me grab a paper towel here a couple of them yep so we're going to do some airbrushing and i will be putting i have some links as well um Kind of funny thing is, I was looking for an airbrush kit. Is I had it given, I didn't have. I was borrowing one when I was in Charleston. I haven't gotten a new one, um, so I was looking at these tonight before I even. I didn't think we were airbrushing tonight. I was asking Chad about it, and I'd already found the one that I liked. Um, but so I'm going to take this link. This is an airbrush kit, and there, I'm going to put several links in the chat right now. Uh, the first one is this is the actual kit. And this has the airbrush compressor, actually three airbrushes, compressor, and some paint. The next one is some, it's some airbrush water-based paint. And Chad and I were discussing this. It's a water-based acrylic paint for airbrushes. Um, there's a lot of different brands. This is one brand uh, that we, you can use. Uh, the next link I'm putting in here is the airbrush cleaning pot. Now, I've used one of these before, and this really helps clean the airbrush up after you do it because you... It, Remember, it's blown air, and that you don't need a lot of paint, and you'll see that here in just a second. So, by putting it into this pot, it ro rotates that paint. If I could clean it through it really quickly, and it cleans it all out, you're spraying it right in there, so you're not like spraying it on your hand, or you're spraying it on a on a uh, paper towel or anything like that, cleaning out your airbrush. But you use this, and it cleans it out. So, um, Chad had he hadn't seen one of these, but these are really great. I love this, and then. A lot of times when you're doing airbrushing, you need, um, depending on the type of um, paint that you're using, you'll need a thinner um, to do some, to thin it out. And usually you're going to want to use with what's, um, and I spell thinner wrong when that's dropping in. Um, I, I, I hit the end too many times. Um, but the, um, it thins out the, air, the paint that will run through the airbrush because it needs to be pretty thin to be able to, Go across evenly, and then the next one is the another is more fluid for um, the airbrush itself or the cleaner that you'd put into the pot. So, um, but that those are all the links, real quick. Just kind of want to get those up there. So now I'm going to go full screen with Chad on uh, the airbrushing. But those are just some links that you, if you're getting into airbrushing, those are some of the things, basic things that you're going to go. This is just the start of it. Trust me. There's, yeah. it's just like anything else. When you start, you start getting into it. Your list expands, but this is what some of the stuff that you, you're going to want to find out um, to get. Yes, and I just started airbrushing. This is new. Um, uh, my first airbrush project was on here, what, a month ago or so, maybe a couple months ago. Um, well, I actually, it's not true. I've done some RC car stuff, so but right. I haven't really gotten into it. Um, so um, I'm actually finding it really fun, So, but I'm still learning as well. So if you have any tips or any anything or you want to come on and show us how to airbrush, that would be great too. So the, the paint I'm going to use tonight is a transparent black. Um, 
And so what that's going to do, and it's a deep black that's transparent, it's going to allow it to fade and add some dirtiness, but without covering up all the look of the stone on there. So you can do, there's all different colors that I have in black. So I have a special effects black uh, okay. on here. And then I also have just a regular opaque or solid black as well. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and use the transparent black. And what's cool about an airbrush, you start off thin and you build it, build it up. Mm -hmm. Just like how you, when you're doing spray paint or anything, you use the kind of that same technique, but you can get into finer to it by the pressure that your air that's coming out and the closeness that you're doing. Now, if you're closer to it, you don't want to push a whole bunch of paint because then it's going to start running. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and like I said, I'm still learning. So what I, what I learned works best on this is to get really close to it. And then as I get my line to kind of pull it out, um, but I'm learning this whole process as well myself. So uh, what I'm going to do is start on some of these bigger wines here, and I'm just going to do a quick, let me get my paint down here, just do a quick spray on here, just inside, just to yeah, kind of give it that little bit of age. So see, as you can see, as it's going in there, it starts adding that extra detail in there. And it's not a lot of darkness, but it's adding that shadow that just adds to more of that realism of the prop of this. And that's what this is. It's a prop. It's, it's like you're making a prop, uh, doing the different finish work. If you're watching any of the movies, I almost guarantee half that stuff has all been airbrushed anyways um, to be able to give it that that depth of look. And, and you'd be amazed with on a, going to, on a movie set just kind of seeing the objects that are there. And with this, you don't necessarily have to be too worried about your overspray. And no. the other thing about when you're doing airbrush, it dries really quickly. And Chad's using a dual action airbrush. And with that dual action airbrush, you can you can just push that the tip down or the, the nozzle, the, the the button, and you can just blow air. So you once you go on there, you can actually hold the air and just kind of dry it itself. Or if you do a little bit too much and you, you can actually clean up that run that's there, or you can like spider it. You can do some different stuff with it. And there's a lot of really great techniques that you can do. I don't know that if you, there's a way that you can take like a pencil and you hold it in front of the tip. And as you're spraying, it actually will they'll spray some globs here and there. And that can just add some different texturing to different things, kind of do like a splatter with it as well. Um, so there's a lot of different little techniques that you can do. Um, but it just takes practice. It really does. And just kind of playing around with it. Um, a lot of people will use a um a stencil and that's one thing about airbrushing stencils go on so much nicer a lot of times because you can control that flow of paint a lot easier and i think chad you only put what three or four drops of paint in for what you've i think done. i did about five drops of paint in here okay so five drops it goes a long way it goes a really long way you can kind of see in here how much and it, it goes a long way yeah because i mean it's, that's one thing I loved about when I was airbrushing. I used to have to like doing like different sets um, or the um, my eight, my at at that I did uh, kind of doing some stuff on there. I did um, for a scout camp one time. There was, I did a dragon where it was like medieval times type thing. And I made a dragon and I did the scale work with, with an airbrush going back over it and just did multiple colors of layers and, like circles and then went back with another and just kind of really, I wish I still had that dragon because I thought that the, the, the airbrush work kind of came out really cool, but nothing, I don't, haven't done anything really detailed. I've seen people that have done photo realistic stuff with airbrushing and it's just, that, that kind of stuff blows me away. But there was that geocache that did that uh, fire on there. Oh geocache. yeah. That was amazing. And then it got blown that was, up. Yeah. That got blown up. Rings of Fire is what that one was called, and it went up in a blaze of glory. <laughs> um, how they did not realize that they had the geocaching symbol on it and everything, and they, they just wanted to blow something up. Um, but, yeah. But as you can see, as, as Chats are going along, those cracks that were difficult to see are a lot easier to see now as he's going back through with, with hitting the, that with the, uh, with the airbrush. 
Yeah, and if you want it to, before you do your final texture, which I actually was going to try this week, you can go with the brown paint, and you can, in fact, I could get a brown paint out. You could actually, um, or if you wanted to give some, some aging, you could kind of go over it, right? And it kind of gives it a little bit of a dark spot. You could do that with a couple different colors of brown all over, and it, yeah. it will give the, that more realistic um, stone look to it as well. So, um, yeah, no. but, yeah, it's it's completely up to you. I mean, there's so much stuff you can do with it, but you know that. I mean, it gives it kind of like that dirtiness kind of look to it. Now, if you did that with several different uh, shades of brown or tan, right, um, it would really give it that stone look. Right, and what what I think is really great. The key is the imperfection. That's 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 the key when you're doing stuff like this. Is is the imperfections if it. If it looks perfect and it came like right off the showroom floor, it doesn't look real. Whereas this, this is plastic that you now you, it looks more like stone and the imperfections and where the dirt's going to catch or the dust and the grime or, or where the grind marks are. It mm -hmm. just makes it look so much, so much better as, as you're going through. And I, I think I agree with going back over with brown, several different browns and doing that, that would make it, do a lot of different um it would add to it as well yeah so all i'm trying to do with this is just add some that a so textured effect that shadow effect make this so dcd sk11 says chad's making a piece of art not a geocache <laughs> I don't know so if yeah, I call I, it art. I'm still learning this whole technique, but it's fun. Yeah, I'm this, enjoying learning it. Yeah, it, it's a lot of fun. Now, I know when I was doing a lot of the, like, some sets and stuff like that, as you're going along um, doing that kind of stuff, you want to even flow as you're coming across and kind of smooth. And before you even start, when you're doing an airbrush, some techniques that – That'll help. And I'm not good at this at all. I'm really out of practice on it when I get my, if and when I get my airbrush, hopefully here pretty soon. Um, it's going to take practice, but you, you get the air flowing first and then you start pulling back. And like I said, the, on the, the dual action, the further you pull back, the more it's going to push that paint through. Um, so that's what you have to do. You really, by, as, as you pull your finger back on the trigger, it will control the amount of uh, airflow and the amount of paint that's, that's coming down. Now, the paint, the airbrush that Chad's using right now is, is a gravity-fed airbrush. And they, there's a gravity-fed gravity airbrush, fed airbrush, and there's also a siphon. Now, the siphon has like a pot, and it pulls it up through the, through the bottom of it. Um, is it where this one's a gravity... So you put the drops in the little in the pot in the top, and it, it pushes through that way. Um, I th think did you just grab? Okay, so yeah. this is a this this is the this is a siphon, and this right. one here you can set at your so that one there is adjustable for what you want. This one you can actually set your limits on it, so it can only go so far. Right now, um, what I did, I had one very similar to that, and it was a siphon. But then you also have the pot where it'll actually do the other as well. Um, I would put my color into the pot, but then I'd have my thinner in the siphon jar. So I'm not going to mess with this one yet. So yeah. So what I would do is when I would, I'd use my paint and then when I needed to clean out the tip, I, I switch it up to the thinner or my cleaner and I'd spray that. And then I'd, then I'd clean out the, the, the pot and then put it back on. So that's what I used the siphon jar for. I always kept cleaner in that and that would help me clean keep the my airbrush clean now one of the things when you are using an airbrush you're going to learn how to take that thing apart because what actually flows yeah. through there is there's a very thin needle and that needle as a it it acts as a cork and it will as you pull that trigger back it pulls that needle back through letting it come through the nozzle of it so you want to that's what you're going to learn to make sure that that's clean and you have to be very careful with that tip because if that tip gets bent, it's going to mess up the way that airflow and the paint's going to come off. It can catch it and you'll start splattering different things. So be, if you get into the airbrushing on it, be very, very careful with it. Um, 
I watched a lot of videos. I'm not very good at airbrushing. I've watched a lot of videos and I was learning a lot of different techniques. So I'm just regurgitating what I've learned and some tips that I, that I've figured out when I was doing different stuff. I do my airbrushing is a lot like Chad's where I'm just kind of doing highlights and doing different things with it. Um, I wanted to get into more shadowing of like uh, more 3d realistic different shapes, kind of making it look kind of like it's bouncing out. Um, cause I, I remember doing that, drawing that and doing, working with ink and, and pencil and chalk and all that when I was in art, when I was doing a lot of different art stuff. Um, but I wanted to get into airbrushing doing that, but it just takes time and it just takes a lot of um, patience. Um, and as you can see, Chad's bringing in some more paint. Um, I want to try to that, that brown if we have time. I just got to clean out since I don't have a ton of different uh, brushes. Um, I need to clean this one out real quick. So okay, so as Chad cleans that, and that's this is where that that pot would come in really handy. You just stick it in there, and it it blows it out and cleans it really quick. I think you take depending on which one. Sometimes it it takes different parts to put us in there, just reflushes it. So. But let us know in, in the chat, have you ever used an airbrush? And if so, um, what's your favorite thing that you've done with the airbrush uh, as you've been working with it or that aspect of it? So um, let's see here. And also don't forget that you can always send us an email at gadgettalkpodcast at gmail.com <clears throat> and, let, and give us, give us, let us see what, you, what you're making. Send us an email or you can always tag us on Instagram at Gadget Talk Podcast. And we'd love to see what you're making. And don't forget, um, as we're, you know, don't forget at the end of this month or the beginning of next month, April, um, the challenge for this month is to make a sci-fi inspired gadget cache or creative cache. And we're doing a fifth element style cache right now. We just finished the stream canister. Um, did you get that into the box? Actually, um, <laughs> I did not. It's actually still sitting here because I ordered another part. One okay. of my uh, relays didn't work. So I was oh, going to okay. show it tonight, but I had to order a new one. And if people know about electronics right now, they're so hard to find. They're really hard to find. Oh, Supply man. chain's down, not working really well on that. So, um, but yeah, so that's, wanted to make mention of that because I remember we were talking about, we were going to show it this week and I just remembered that we hadn't seen it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, uh, unfortunately I'm just, uh, waiting for one more part everything else is done on it so okay. um i really like the way it turned out I, I'm, I'm excited to stick it out there excited and nervous it's the first one that i'm nervous about someone destroying it oh yeah i can i can i can imagine i can imagine so um but we'll see i mean it the hardest part on it to make, I think, was the electronics is the hardest part and the most expensive part. So um, the rest of it's fairly simple. So if it gets destroyed, then figure out how to make it better. We'll see. But like, the, I guess the the nice part about it is it's behind a police station. So hopefully that will deter someone from wanting to destroy it. So as uh, Chad's cleaning, cleaning that, and as he's cleaning that, I wanted to, like I said I, earlier, I talked about uh, Tales from the Cache or TFTC, and I wanted to show you a little bit of a video clip from it. So I'm going to go ahead and add that to our stream while you're working on cleaning that up real quick, Chad. Yep. So um, we're, we're good, but go ahead and show that real quick. All right, so I'm going to show this. And so this is Tales from the Cache, and I think you should be able to hear it. So there's... There's some of the caches in it. And this is one of them that's actually based off of mine. Um, that one there. So, but yeah, this is just the video game of it. So, and I put the link in the chat already. Oh, that's another one that was based off of one of mine. I hadn't seen this preview. So there, and if you go, if I, I didn't know if he was going to show the log book. So there's a lot of different types of caches. You got ammo cans, you got gadget caches. Um, some places you have to find a tool. And oh, hey, there's a uh, looks like a preform. The old notorious pile of sticks. Oh, yep, the unusual pile of sticks. So that's in there. Oh, hey, and look, there's a gadget geocache talk um, logo on there on the top oh. of that thing on there. That's really cool. So, hey, one time that you can cash in the rain and not worry about getting wet. 
because it's it's raining, so it's got the weather. Almost looks like you're cashing in a tornado and in, in a uh, hurricane. So and you got different attributes. Um, you can do. There's a drone that you can fly. Um, there's uh, there's some geosensing that you can do at different times. How fast you can move. And one of the things that he was working. At, so there's a geosense. I'm trying to find it. Wish my geosense worked like that. Um, some different gadgets, caches, and a lock picking cache. That's kind of cool to That's be able to cool. get into it. Got it. So yeah, he's put in a lot of really great work. And like I said, this has just been a lot of fun. And then I recognize some names on there. I Emily, the brew. There oh, knows? there's cash the line button as some swag. Oh, that's cool. So yeah, there's just a lot of different aspects of it. I know he's been working on underwater cash too on this as well. So just some stuff on, on there that I wanted to share with you. Um, remember that's, TFTC, um, not thanks for the cash, but tales from the cash. Um, so that's just really a lot of fun. Um, so if you want to check those out, um, the link is in the chat, and I'll make sure I have it as well in the description after the show as well. So be on the look for that. It's only like eight bucks. It's not that expensive to get, and that will help him out. And he's doing a lot more development on it as well. Nice. Okay, back to this. okay. So I went and found. <laughs> Uh, three different color of browns. Um, we have a uh, dark brown, uh, a, another dark brown, and a coffee brown. Oh, I see that one's <laughs> transparent. Um, I don't know what would look better, honestly. Uh, maybe a dark brown. If I had more than one airbrush, I would use multiple, of them, but it takes time to clean them out. Let me just look at the color. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Maybe I'll do a transparent dark brown. Yeah, I think maybe we tried dark brown. What do you think? No comment. Oh, Battery's I think your mic died. My, what? Yeah, it did, and I was gonna switch it out real quick. So, um, yeah, I think yeah, doing the air, whatever color. <laughs> So I'm just going to put a couple drops in here. Then. Give it a test here. Okay, here we go. Now you switched okay. out. <laughs> Great. <laughs> yep. Um, so I don't know the best way to do this, so we're experimenting. So... Um, I think just do a couple, some streaks, maybe. I should, probably should look at how they do this typically. Or we'll do a rock. I don't know if you guys can see that brown kind of on there. Yeah. In areas, I can see it. But I think if you did a whole bunch of it in different colors, I think that they would look really good. And you could even, as you're airbrushing, the paint will actually mix in there. So if you yeah. wanted to, as you're doing it, you could actually drip, just add another drop of one of the other colors in there, at, not Let's even completely it. clean it Let's out. It. And that may even add some more texture to it um, in there. And it's not going to take a lot. So. I don't know what I'm doing, but it looks good to me. Yep, and then you could like then if you go back with like a darker color, and then just kind of do like another base over. I mean, it's just gonna all you're doing is making it look. Yeah, maybe the one up and down probably wasn't the best way to go, but I don't know. I'd probably yeah. try and find some different color browns that maybe fit better. Maybe some tans. Right, tans, um, and maybe add a little bit. Yeah, and just different. Add a little maybe. Yeah, now a, I got to go back and bit. hit. A little bit of the black again, but that's no problem. That's easy enough to do. Right. So, but yeah, that's kind of fun. And then like, do. um, I can't remember who said it. I think it was Quincy that said it earlier that you'd have to go back through afterwards and add a sealer to it if you're going to put it outside. But Chad, like Chad's house, he's going to be putting this is going to be in a big box. Yeah. And the sealers I use, I actually have here, but, um, 
Let me see. I can see if I have any, but it's just an exterior sealer. It's nothing big. Right. Right. And, and with any painting that you're doing, you're going to want to do that too anyways because it's going to keep – it's going to make it last a lot longer out there. Um, eventually, on anything that you paint that you put outside, you're going to have to come back and do some touch-up. It's just – it's just inevitable. Um, but how soon that's going to be depends on how you prepare it. So. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Then uh, do a sealer on it. And then obviously next week we'll be making the puzzle to it. So. Yep. And I'm really looking forward to that next week. Now, don't forget as, as if we're wrapping up the challenge for this month is to make a sci-fi inspired cash. Um, and that could be a jack gadget cache or just creative cache, but sci-fi inspired. We want to see what you're going to come up with. Um, really want to see what, what, what you got, uh, brings and what you can do is just email us what, what you're doing and we can set you up into the lineup for that night. And that's going to be, we're going to be doing that the first week of April is where we're going to be doing that. And it's gadget talk podcast at gmail.com is where you can email us. And then also if you ever see, if you're out there, you can just tag us on Instagram at gadget talk podcast. And we'll see that as well. You can also tag me, my myself at behind the cash, or you can tag uh, Chad at bounce bounce eight on Instagram. And those we'll, that way we can sh uh, for sure see it. So tag all three of them, gadget talk podcast behind the cash bounce bounce eight, and we'll all get to see everything on there. So yeah, that Chad, yeah. that looks really cool. I like the way that you did the stonework on this. It looks really, really great. Um, Hugh saying, um, I was amazed how the piece turned out from start to finish today. Great ideas. Thanks for the show, guys. I hit the like button. Thanks, Hugh, for hitting that like button. Don't let Hugh be the only ones that hit that like <laughs> button. You hit that like button, too. <laughs> Actually, to answer one of Hugh's questions, he wanted to know uh, about kits going back up. So, um, the, I actually just made a bunch of kits over the weekend, so they will be back up here in the next day or two. So, um, if you want one of the kits that, uh, that Dave Wagner or DJ, DJW house makes, um, they'll be on the Chromia print shop here later this week. All right. Is that me? All right. <laughs> I think it was just my TV. I, I was trying to close out on one of the screens and the uh, TFTC video started playing again. I forgot to show you there's a motorcycle in that unless it didn't make it past beta, but you can actually ride a motorcycle in part of that to get to a cash faster. Um, but don't forget the, all the links are going to be in the description down below here very shortly. And, um, or you can go back through the chat and you can find the different links for the airbrush, the Dremels, the paints, the, um, what else did we do? The, the Dremel tips. And then there's some other links in there as well. So be yeah, sure paints, to check those out. Yeah. Next week, as Chad was saying, we're going to be building, he's going to be making the puzzle for this. And you don't want to miss that. And it's going to be the same gadget time and the same gadget place. Yeah, so, nice. <laughs> I love it. So, all right. Anything else tonight, Chad? Uh, no, that is it. I appreciate everybody joining in and uh, watching kind of my idea of how to, how to, uh, Turn the plastic into stone. I think Derek said that, right? How to turn plastic to stone. Flat, flat change yeah, plastic to so. stone. Yep. Yep. I appreciate it. I love people watching in the comments. That's why I do this is, is listening to people's comments. So. Oh, yeah. This, it was a lot of fun. A lot of, thanks for joining us tonight. Love seeing you all out here. Thanks for everybody that's joined us from around the world. Uh, really great. Oh, one other thing before we jump off here. This, this Saturday, um, 2 Central, I think it's, yeah, it's going to be 2 Central, I haven't announced it yet on my channel yet, but I'm going to be talking to doing my, one of my live workshop hangouts as well. And I'm going to be talking with Owen, the creator of the 3D maze quick release. Of course I've got it together, so I can't put it, take it apart, but we're, he's going to, we're actually, we're going to be talking about designing 3D puzzles um, with, or designing um, with, uh, I think he uses fusion 360. So we're going to be talking about how to design a, um, 3D, he does a great um, job at designing stuff. Mo models and stuff like that. And he does such a phenomenal job. He's over in the UK. So that's going to be this Saturday, 2 o'clock. Those that are challenged, you can watch the rerun. Um, but don't forget, that's just something else. So kind of a little shameless plug for um, my channel on there for that this weekend. But you don't want to miss that as well. Um, but next week, 
back here on Tuesday night. We will be doing the puzzle for um, with the fifth element stones. So this is plastic. This looks horrible. Chad's is stone. It looks a lot better. So <laughs> now I got to get more paint and I got to build myself another booth. All right. <laughs> That's all yeah. I need. Well, you'll get there. I mean, yeah. So, all right, everybody. Thanks for joining us. And we will see you next week here on Gadget Talk. See ya.